Movie twists are always fun elements that can spice up a movie. Just ask directors like M. Night Shyamalan, who loves using this time and time again. And while the term has been overused lately, subverting expectations can be such an entertaining experience and can turn a good movie into a great one. However, there are times when twists might have been better if they'd been revealed earlier on. Now, there will be major spoilers ahead, so you have been warned. And with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 major horror movie reveals that should have come at the beginning. Number 10. Corey as the Shape in Halloween Ends Halloween Ends attempted to bring new concepts to the series, such as the idea of evil passing through people. The problem is that these ideas, while fine on their own, were introduced in the concluding chapter of the trilogy and were not teased in the marketing at all. Those who've seen the film all know Corey Cunningham, the babysitter that becomes vilified in Haddonfield after accidentally killing a young boy. He later encounters Michael Myers in the sewers and takes over the mantle, even stealing the mask from the shape later on. The surprise of many is that Corey essentially becomes the main antagonist for most of the film. To alleviate the audience's disappointment, Corey should have been introduced earlier, not in the movie itself, but rather at the beginning of David Gordon Green's trilogy. By appearing in Halloween, the character would have been more well established by the time he becomes the villain in Halloween Ends. Without this, it is no surprise why many were baffled at the decision of introducing a new focal character when they were promised the final confrontation between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. Number 9. Lily's Parents in The Craft Legacy the Craft Legacy is a sequel to the 1996 original that focuses on a new set of characters. This 2020 film focuses on Lily, who becomes entangled in the world of witchcraft. One of the movie's major reveals, however, would have worked better had it been introduced right from the start. You see, Lily is the daughter of Helen, but it's later revealed to her that she was adopted by the psychologist. Her foster mother tells her that her true lineage is through Helen's former patient. With the movie being titled The Craft Legacy, audiences already expected a connection to the original and deducted that the identity of the mother was most likely one of the original witches. And to the surprise of literally no one, Lily's mother is revealed to be Nancy, the antagonist of The Craft. The twist falls flat on its face because once you find out Lily is adopted, everyone can tell what's coming from a mile away. Had it been revealed at the beginning, the craft legacy could have explored what it means to be Nancy Down's daughter as well as the themes of nature versus nurture. Number 8. Takuchi's Motivations in Battle Royale 2 Requiem Battle Royale 2 Requiem is the 2003 film that continues the story of Battle Royale. While its predecessor is considered a classic Japanese movie, the sequel doesn't quite achieve the same results. The film is just too chaotic, with numerous of its cast dropping like flies before they could make any impact. Requiem's decision to make the protagonist terrorists also came at the wrong time, especially in 2003. One of the big reveals, however, is with the character of Riki Takuchi, the teacher who volunteers our cast to be part of the new battle royale. He is revealed to have been a victim of Wild Seven's terrorist attack, losing his daughter in the process. For those needing context, Wild Seven is the freedom fighter group led by Shuya Nanahara, the hero of the original film, and I'm really sorry if I just butchered that name. This plot point would have worked better had it been introduced right away and would have explained the character's motivations. As Takuchi is portrayed as a cartoonish villain for most of the film, revealing that he was a victim of terrorism would have given him much needed pathos. Number 7. Freddy being innocent in a nightmare on Elm Street Remakes can be tricky to pull off due to their source material usually being beloved by fans. For 2010's A Nightmare on Elm Street remake, they not only had to overcome this stigma but had to live up to the legacy left behind by Freddy Krueger actor Robert England. It's a shame then that despite some clever ideas, the film never sticks the landing. One of the interesting concepts in the movie is the idea that Freddy Krueger might be innocent. While the original series made it clear that he was guilty of being a child murderer, the remake presents the concept that the children of Elm Street may not have been truthful. The problem is that this revelation comes in the middle of the film when everything has been more or less a retread of the original. Freddy being an innocent victim of mob justice could have helped the remake differentiate itself. Unfortunately, the filmmakers backed out of this concept as Kruger was confirmed to have been a child molester by the end of the remake. Number 6. Amanda Rigging the Traps in Saw 3 Saw 3 opens with a man named Troy dying in the film's opening trap. 
In the aftermath, police detectives discover that he had no means of escape, something uncharacteristic of the Jigsaw Killer, as he usually gives his victims a chance to live. Later on, however, Amanda Young admits that she was the one altering the traps. As Jigsaw's apprentice, she believed that people were incapable of change regardless of the trauma they'd survive, something she'd disagree with Jigsaw aka John Kramer on. While the film treats this as a revelation, Amanda rigging the traps is not really a surprise. For one, Jigsaw has been true to his twisted moral code through the events of the movie. He's cruel and insane for sure, but he has never been a liar. With a twist too telegraphed, the film Filmmakers were better off showing Amanda rigging the traps right away. Doing so might have added tension during her scenes with Jigsaw, with the audience knowing her guilt. Number 5. Ellie's Plan in Glass One of the primary characters in M. Night Shyamalan's Glass is Dr. Ellie Staple, a psychiatrist who is in charge of treating our three main characters. Throughout the film, she attempts to convince our trio that they are having delusions of grandeur and that they are not superpowered beings. But as the end of the movie reveals, Ellie was working under a secret organization that has suppressed the existence of the superhumans. Now, her group and the reveal are part of Shyamalan's patented twist, but like some of his reveals, this should have come earlier in the film. It would be interesting for the movie to explore this shadow organization and why they have been trying to hide these larger-than-life beings. Instead, Glass uses this as a twist, wherein it would have been more interesting had this concept been present in the film right away. Ultimately, Glass had several good ideas that were bogged down by their execution. Number 4. Lee is an android in Morgan in 2016's Morgan, Risk Assessment Officer Lee Weathers is tasked to take care of our title character. The child, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, is an android who soon becomes a major threat. But the end of the movie reveals that Lee is an android as well and is the predecessor to Morgan. While a fine twist to cap off the movie, her being an android deserved to have been explored further. Though the reveal explains why Weathers is so proficient with weapons and combat, audiences were already suspecting that she was an android due to the damage she takes throughout the film. And because of how telegraphed the twist is, it would have been more interesting to see Lee and how she is different from Morgan, who is a more advanced model. We could have seen subtle changes made by the scientists and what they decided to improve through Morgan. Sure, the story might be too similar to Blade Runner, but the premise of an older android confronting the new model is still an interesting one. Number 3. Edwin as a Killer in Predators Predators switch things up by giving audiences a cast of diverse rogues, from ruthless mercenaries, cartel enforcers and Yakuza members. But in a poor attempt at a twist, the movie thought itself clever when audiences could see a certain reveal coming right from the start. One of the survivors of the Game Preserve planet is Edwin, a disgraced doctor who accidentally killed his patient. Throughout the film, fellow characters question why he was taken by the Predators when the rest of the group are hardened killers. The problem then is that genre-savvy viewers already know what the twist is and that Edwin is a serial killer. He then becomes the secondary villain for the rest of the film when he tries to murder Isabel but is stopped and killed by Royce before doing so. While the movie does its best to turn this into an effective twist, Edwin's innocence was always in doubt. So by the time he shows his true colours, it's not much of a surprise. Number 2. Copycat Killer in Friday the 13th Part 5 A New Beginning Friday the 13th, the final chapter, killed Jason Voorhees under the hands of Tommy Jarvis and was intended to be the conclusion to the series. But because of how profitable these films were, Friday the 13th Part 5 A New Beginning was released a year later. The movie is best known for being the only Friday the 13th picture past the original not to feature Jason Voorhees as the killer. Instead, we got a one-off with Roy Burns, a paramedic whose son is killed early in the movie. Though we do get a clear shot of Roy giving a sinister look upon seeing his son's corpse, the film tries to present numerous red herrings from other victims to even Tommy himself. Because of this, Roy never really gets to shine as a character, a problem that would have been alleviated had he been confirmed as the killer right away. Doing so would have added more insight to him and much needed screen time. This could even draw parallels between Roy and Pamela Voorhees, both parents who became murderers because of the death of their children. Number 1. The Present Day Setting in the Village M. Night Shyamalan's The Village is considered the turning point for the director's career. While The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable and Signs were surefire hits, his next effort is when the cracks started to show. This is best seen in the film's twist, which divided audiences everywhere. Some loved it, while others hated it. 
You see, the picture presents itself as a historical horror movie set in a 19th century village. But by the end of the movie, protagonist Ivy discovers that her home is built on a lie. The village was founded in the 1970s in a world where technology and modern medicines exist. This twist rendered the supernatural scares moot. Had the reveal been earlier, however, now that's a different story. The concept of creating a historical village free from the outside world is already an interesting idea as it also would have added conflict to Ivy's character. Because she was blind due to the lack of medicine, finding out that she lived in a world where she could have been cured would have been an interesting direction for the story. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.